ABC 10 at Issue starts now. Katie McGinty, Democrat for Governor. I'm Rob McCord. They all believe they have what it takes to be governor. Hi, I'm Tom Wolf. I'm running for governor of Pennsylvania. Four candidates fighting for your vote. I'm Allison Schwartz. The winner will take on a sitting GOP governor with historically low poll numbers. But before that happens, a Democrat must emerge victorious. I believe I'm that leader. I hope you will support me. I want to be your invest and innovate governor. I'll fight for you. Good morning, I'm Jim Rosenfield. Welcome to NBC 10 at Issue. When Democrats go to the polls on Tuesday, they'll choose from a group of four candidates who want to be the next governor of Pennsylvania. And to help you decide where your vote will go, NBC 10 interviewed all four, pressing them on the issues that affect your life. Now, each candidate came individually to NBC 10 studios at different times, depending on their schedules. I interviewed them separately about the top concerns facing voters from our area. Campaign finance reports just came out um, that show you've been spending about a million dollars a week in the last period, in the last five weeks on TV. Yes, yeah, uh, and, and that's one of the, the challenges we have in, in American democracy. How to get your name out if, if you're not an incumbent. What does it say about our political system? when someone in your position can afford to get that message out, but someone else who may be just as qualified, who doesn't have the resources, can't get that message out and therefore doesn't have a shot. Yeah, I think that's unfair. You've been outgunned in terms of fundraising, in terms of hitting the airways with television ads. Has that hurt you? It has given me the first-hand understanding that we need political reform, that money in politics is a debilitating thing and keeps a lot of good candidates, I think, out. Are you naive in any way, do you think, when it comes to the realities of what we're dealing with on the streets? What you're referring to was a lovely Valentine's Day interview that my wife and I had on NPR. It was like an on-air date. And uh, what we were saying is, as a long, as a long time in a couple. Of course we've faced our share of ugliness, but we've also faced a ton of acceptance. Despite your, your long tenure both here in the state at the state level and in, on, in Congress, are you surprised to see Tom Wolf sort of surging ahead of you uh, early on? What happened to that sort of early lead that you enjoyed? Well, we actually did sort of expect uh, Tom Wolf because honestly, you, you put $10 million in of your own money and put it up on TV early. Uh, we knew that he was likely to get ahead. Now to our coverage of Decision 2014. Democratic frontrunner Tom Wolf made the rounds in the Poconos today. Wolf campaigned at Hanover Township, Luzerne County. Wolf has been the target of some critical ads from his opponents. Now, one day after the Democrats running for governor sparred in their final debate, NBC 10 is doing some fact checking. Tonight, Luann Kahn is working with our partners at factcheck.org at the University of Pennsylvania to examine the claims Congresswoman Allison Schwartz is making in a campaign ad. Yes, Wolf ran his family business, but in order to sell it, he forced it deep into debt. Wolf walked away with $20 million. He didn't just walk away. The head of factcheck.org says Allison Schwartz's ad attacking the front runner in the Democratic gubernatorial campaign is misleading because it tells half a story. What he did was come back after the recession had occurred, invested $11 million of his own money in the company. Uh, the ad shows $64 million in debt, but actually how much the company took on in debt was $23 million in order to pay off him and his cousins. The Schwartz campaign says the ad is 100% true. We stand by the ad. The result? Hundreds of employees lost their jobs. It's true. Factcheck.org says that is true, but Tom Wolf was not managing the company at that time. When he came back, the company had uh, zero value. And by investing money into the company, they've not only saved the 200 or so jobs that existed at that time, but they've increased by a small amount 20 or 30 more jobs. The Schwartz campaign told NBC10 News, if you're going to say we didn't tell the whole story, then you have to say Wolf didn't tell the whole story either. Now, the Schwartz campaign admits it's not telling both sides of the story in the ad, but says just the side of the story that you're not going to hear from Wolf, a side they say you need as an informed voter. Tonight, NBC10's Luann Khan and our partners at factcheck.org take a closer look at one of McCord's campaign ads. On pensions, the press is comparing Tom Wolf 
to Tom Corbett. It's not the press, it's one media outlet. Factcheck.org says this Rob McCord ad exaggerates and misleads to take a swipe at Democratic gubernatorial frontrunner Tom Wolf. The McCord campaign vigorously defends it, calling the ad 100% accurate. Wolf admits his company terminated its pension plan. Corbett's proposed doing the same thing to the state pension fund. They say Tom Wolf got rid of the pension at that company. That's the implication, that he got rid of it. He didn't. He was no longer in charge of the company. He had already sold the company. McCord's campaign says when Wolf came back to his family business, if he really believed in the pension plan, he could have brought it back. He didn't. Factcheck.org says that's a fair point, but it's not in the ad. There's more. A state pension investment fund lost $19 million in Wolf's company. The biggest loser? Our state retirement fund. An average reader would assume, or an average view would assume, that the state taxpayers lost $19 million. Well, that's not the case. Factcheck.org says taxpayers only lost 5% of $19 million. The McCord campaign tells NBC10 News it's accurate. A state pension investment firm did lose $19 million, and the biggest loser was the retirement fund. Factcheck.org says the ad leads you to believe Tom Wolf is a guy who is out to get rid of state pensions. In fact, what Tom Wolf has said was that he won't make any changes to the state pension plan. Bottom line, factcheck.org says this ad doesn't give you the full story. Matt Delucia spent the day breaking down those numbers. He's live in Center City. Matt, not much time left. The final push clearly on. Yeah, more money generally means more ads, but that doesn't necessarily mean more votes. Onslaught of political advertisements is not going away, especially now in the final 14 days of the Pennsylvania gubernatorial primary. Media analyst Larry Seisler believes now is the time that voters start paying attention. What the campaigns do is they say, okay, we're going to save our money because we really want to bombard people in as many ways as possible to get our message across. To find out how much money the candidates have on hand, I went through the latest campaign finance reports, which offer data through the end of March. Tom Wolf's campaign had the most cash in the coffers with just over $7 million, followed by Schwartz, McCord, and McGinty, who trails with $1 million. What happens is if a campaign has a message or an ad that can cut through the clutter, it can be a winner for them. But at the same time, there's a lot of clutter out there. Looking at how much has been spent so far, Wolf leads the field with more than $5 million, Allison Schwartz with barely $1 million. And her campaign tells us today that the final two weeks will be focused on a ground operation and also television ads, mostly in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. I have also been looking at how this primary war of words could actually help the incumbent, Governor Corbett, with his re-election chances. That is coming up when we see you at 5. Now to decision 2014 and a landslide victory tonight in the race for governor. Pennsylvania Democrats have chosen millionaire businessman Tom Wolf to challenge Republican Governor Tom Corbett in the fall. This race was called just over an hour after the polls closed. Here's why. Wolf won the primary with 58% of the vote. Allison Schwartz and Rob McCord both came in a distant second with 17%. Katie McGinty received 8% of the vote. NBC 10's George Spencer is live at Wolf's headquarters in York tonight. George, the polls predicted this outcome. Uh, Jacqueline, the polls had him way out in front, and tonight the votes did as well. Tom Wolf sounded like a general election candidate tonight as he zeroed in on the themes he will use in his fight against Governor Corbett. He rode into the stadium here amid cheers from his supporters in the Jeep, made famous in his commercials, helping portray an everyman accessibility, even as someone wealthy enough to spend 10 million of his own dollars on this campaign. He told supporters his general election platform will focus on investment in schools, middle class jobs, and leveling the playing field for all Pennsylvanians. How hard is it going to be, be to beat Tom Corbett? I think he's going to have a, a lot of money. He has a lot of expertise in running for elections. This will be my first general election, so it'll be hard. We are going to roll on through from now until Election Day. Right now on NBC 10 at Issue, Pennsylvania Governor Tom Corbett. We're talking to the man repeatedly named America's most vulnerable governor as his campaign for re-election truly begins. The real Tom Wolf is something completely different than what we're seeing in, in the TV ads. 
plus the wolf trying to blow his house down. What former Democratic Governor Ed Rendell thinks of Corbett's newly nominated opponent. I'm not going to permit it. Never. And a major new fight in the New Jersey State Legislature. A senator in the Garden State pushing for the legalization of marijuana. Next question for you. The ongoing controversy here involving emails containing pornography. Totally opposed to that kind of exchange. Totally opposed. Okay. Now, to say that it's a culture, then Mr. Wolf had a culture too. Because as you know, that it has come out recently, there were some actions when he was uh, Secretary of Revenue. When I last spoke with Governor Corbett, he had made the allegation that perhaps someone on your staff, someone under your employee, had also uh, been involved in a controversy where they sent inappropriate emails while you were Secretary of Revenue. Mm -hmm. How do you counter that point? Uh, it actually happened. By now, you've probably seen this hour showing you here from Governor Tom Corbett's campaign attacking Democratic candidate Tom Wolf tonight. NBC 10 reporter Luann Khan is working with our political partner, factcheck.org, here in Philadelphia, to put this ad to the truth test. Tom Wolf's record on jobs is a car wreck. While Governor Corbett's campaign stands by this ad, factcheck.org believes it's a car wreck of sorts, too. It's misleading in a way that um, is illogical and uh, and. Uh, invalid. While Wolf served in Harrisburg as the state's top tax collector, our taxes went through the roof. The problems with that are taxes did not go through the roof when Wolf was the uh, secretary of uh, Department of Revenue because uh, he was only there 18 months. There were no new taxes that were raised during that time. The Corbett campaign says Wolf tried to raise taxes and Wolf is no different than other Democrats. Same tax and spend culture. Higher taxes led to 152,000 PA workers losing their jobs. The actual number was 40,400, so it's considerably less. The majority of those job losses would be as a result of the Great Recession. The Corbett campaign says there is obviously a difference of opinion on the numbers. Fortunately, Tom Corbett came along and cleaned up Wolf's mess. Corbett lowered taxes, creating 150,000 new jobs. It said he created 150,000 jobs. During that period of time, there were a lot of job losses, uh, teachers, firefighters. Um, so the actual number is 96,000. The Corbett campaign says its numbers come from legitimate sources. Uh, which they sent to us, factcheck.org says they are real numbers. They're just used in a way that doesn't tell the whole truth. Joining me now is NBC political analyst and, of course, former governor of Pennsylvania, Ed Rendell. He's here with the Democratic perspective on what's next in the governor's race. Thanks for being here, Governor. We really appreciate it. My pleasure, it. Jim. Uh, Tom Wolf is hoping to be the first candidate to ever unseat an incumbent governor. What do you think he needs to do to make that happen? Well, I think he needs to just keep doing what he, what he did in the primary. I sat down with both men right here at NBC10 to break down their stance on Pennsylvania's hot-button issues. Today, we start with education. Both agree it's important, but differ, of course, on how to fund the state's public schools. York businessman Tom Wolf says education is essential for a strong state and a strong economy. He blames Governor Corbett for cutting school budgets by a billion dollars, a move he says increased real estate taxes and class size. We can't keep taking money out of our schools uh, and, and pretend that we're going to get to a good, a good result. Wolf says his proposed 5% severance tax on natural gas extraction will bring in hundreds of millions of education dollars. His plan to find extra cash for schools includes charter school reform, closing tax loopholes, and expanding Medicaid. We need to make sure that we are establishing the correct priorities in, in, for our state. Education has to be at the top of that list of priorities, not at the bottom. Today, we spend more money on education, K-12, through than any time in our history. $10.3 billion. Governor Tom Corbett insists that Massive school budget cuts happened before he took office when funding holes were plugged by federal stimulus money that dried up. The governor says that Philadelphia could help its beleaguered schools by collecting the half a billion dollars it's owed in real estate taxes. He also wants the district officials to re-examine spending. And this is not a new phenomenon for the school district of Philadelphia. They've been having problems for 40 years. The governor says if Philadelphia teachers paid part of their health care premiums, the district would save more than $40 million. He supports the Philadelphia School Reform Commission's recent canceling of the teachers' contract and an effort to impose contributions. You think that that was a good move? 
the way they did it, I don't. Uh, they're demonizing the teachers in the way they did it, uh, and I think they're doing it because they feel that the rest of the state is really not, does not have Philadelphia's back. 498 school districts, the teachers union contributes to their health care. There are just two school districts that they do not, Philadelphia and Chester Upland. And both men believe the school funding formula needs to be changed. The governor believes that can't happen until there's pension reform. Wolf opposes any changes to current employees' pension plans. Tomorrow on NBC 10 News at 5, we compare the candidates on jobs and money, that being your money, so be sure to tune in. Today, we focus on how each candidate will impact your wallet. Mr. Wolf has said he's going to raise taxes and he's going to spend more, but he won't tell anybody how much he's going to raise them, how much more he's going to spend. I've been really specific on this. Uh, I've said I want to reduce taxes for the middle class. Why that would be translated in some tortured logic into increasing taxes for the middle class, I don't know. Both Democratic gubernatorial candidate Tom Wolf and Republican Governor Tom Corbett acknowledge that people in the Keystone State have no stomach for higher taxes. People get to a point where they say, I can't continue to give more and more money to the state uh, to spend. How about if I keep some? And that's exactly what I've been doing. I want to make a fairer tax system. I want to reduce property taxes. I want to uh, uh, reduce the corporate net income tax. Corbett says his work to save the refineries, invest in the shipyards, and build a natural gas industry have boosted the local economy. When it comes to jobs, the governor says thanks to his policies, the state currently has thousands of openings. 250,000 job openings. Can you imagine if we could find the people to go into those? If we could fill 50 percent of those, what would happen to the, to the unemployment numbers? We lost 9,600 jobs just in September. That, that's not what you want to hear. Uh, we've had five downgradings uh, from bond rating agencies over the last two years. Uh, that's not what you want to hear. Wolf says the success as a business owner will benefit the state. He says he'll focus on manufacturing and transportation. Pennsylvania is blessed with some natural resources, coal, gas, uh, hardwoods, agricultural land, fresh water. We ought to make sure that we're investing in, in the things that would actually produce a return on those natural resources. Corbett believes some Pennsylvanians are struggling because of the pressure pensions put on the state's budget. It's really driving the cost of uh, property tax to go up and it's driving people to sell their homes or move out of their homes in order to pay their property tax. Wolf says pensions are necessary to attract high quality employees and give middle class workers financial security. And voters have five more days to decide who they agree with. On Monday, as we lead up to the election, we'll take a look at what role attack ads have played in the governor's race and the efforts that candidates are making to get voters to the polls. Governor Tom Corbett cut nearly a billion dollars from education. We already know Tom Wolf was Ed Rendell's tax-collecting hatchet man. There's been no leadership and no vision. Wolf's promising to raise middle-class taxes, and he seems like the type of guy that's going to keep that promise. They've been impossible to avoid. Negative TV political ads between Pennsylvania Governor Republican Tom Corbett and his challenger Democrat Tom Wolf. The false accusations, uh, I, I think, have to be answered. Well, you know, I'd be happy to debate on facts. New polls find attack ads may be working for Governor Corbett, who continues to trail Wolf, but has tightened the distance between them. Is it frustrating to you to watch these attack ads? And is there a proper system in place? Is it, is it part of the game? Are these vetted? Are they truthful 100% of the time? I, I look at this. For four years, there have been ads on TV against me. Four years repeating, I cut education funding. Most recent one I see showing the headlines that I cut education from 2011 when the budget was first done. I mean, it's a lie. Do you have to put these out in order to win? In a Democratic campaign, uh, I'm, I'm not sure w where you draw the line in terms of negative advertising. When I call the governor to account for a poorly performing economy or, or a commonwealth government that is going broke or schools have been hollowed out, is that negative advertising? I think that's, that's actually just talking about the reality. I've been seeing this lie going on and on and on and trying to counter it. Uh, without putting commercials on of our, our, ourselves until now. I have not indulged in the kind of, I think, mudslinging that, that the other side has. When uh, somebody makes false accusations about uh, you as a person, I think that's negative advertising. I don't think I've done that. And you can expect to see the ads continue through much of the day tomorrow. The polls don't close until 8 p.m. Now, I'll be heading out to Pittsburgh to cover the Corbett camp on election night. Luann Conn will be in York at Wolf Campaign Headquarters. 
count on NBC10 to bring you live up to the minute election night results. Live updates begin right after the polls close tomorrow night, as I mentioned, at 8 o'clock, right here on NBC10. An historic election. Tonight, there is a new governor elect in Pennsylvania. Tom Wolf spent about $10 million of his own money for ads. Here's a look at the votes. So far, not all of the precincts have been reported, but Tom Wolf has about a 300,000 vote lead. 56% of the vote Wolf has taken. And we have team coverage of the governor's race. Keith Jones is with Governor Corbett's camp in Pittsburgh. But we begin with NBC 10's Luann Kahn, who is with the governor elect, Tom Wolf, in York, Pennsylvania. Luann. The death of a senator. He's been a great example for the people of our state. Has led to a new day in New Jersey. California doesn't need a senator. Hollywood doesn't need a senator. New Jersey needs a senator. He puts up his fists. I'm going to extend a hand. Tonight, the final face off. Steve Lonigan, Corey Booker, fighting to the finish. In front of a live audience on the campus of Rowan University, it's the New Jersey debate for U.S. Senate. From NBC 10 News in Philadelphia, here's tonight's moderator, Jim Rosenfield. And good evening. Welcome to all of you. Countdown to Election Day now on 22 days before voters will head to the polls. And in New Jersey, all 12 congressional seats are up for grabs. Tomorrow is the last day to register to vote. You can do so at your county clerk's office up until tomorrow night. Well, one hotly contested race is New Jersey's first congressional district, which has a Democratic stronghold. Congressman Rob Andrews vacated the seat after two decades. Now, State Senator Donald Norcross and former Eagle Gary Cobb are vying to replace him. NBC 10 South Jersey Bureau reporter Sydney Long is live in Cherry Hill tonight. And Sydney, you spoke to both candidates about the issues most important to voters. Renee, that's right, I did. First and foremost on the mind of South Jersey voters are the availability of jobs. We're talking about good paying jobs and benefits, along with health care and being able to pay for their children's college. We found out today that Senator Norcross and Gary Cobb, they're not so far apart on these points. I'm not a politician. I'm not. I don't want to be a politician. Still, former Eagles player and sportscaster Gary Cobb says he can't wait to get elected to Congress to make a difference for South Jersey's middle class. We've got to straighten out the economy. Health care is another problem. Look at ISIS. Look at the foreign policy. What do you think you differ from your opponent on the job crisis? Well, I have a history of creating economic opportunity here in South Jersey. Senator Donald Norcross says his work with New Jersey's Economic Opportunity Act stands on its own merit. Cobb says the creation of jobs can't just be about tax breaks or incentive, but about teaming with colleges to attract science and technology to the region. I think a lot of colleges that don't pay taxes, that are just going up on the tuition, just out of control. Where the two agree, the Affordable Health Care Act. Let's keep it, but let's fix it. A person should be able to, to get the doctor they want. They should be able to keep the medical care that they want. Both agree bail reform will prevail on New Jersey's November ballot by referendum and lessen the burden on taxpayers to get people into the workforce. You got somebody that was a nonviolent non drug offender. Mm -hmm. I want them back into the workforce. Instead of costing the state $60,000 to have a man or a woman out having a job where they're contributing, taking care of their families, taking care of their community, that's a win in anybody's book. Now, both Norcross and Cobb will speak to these very same issues this week at a Meet the Candidates luncheon at the Gloucester County Chamber of Commerce. That is at lunchtime. There is also another panel discussion between the two candidates coming up on October 31st, just four days before Election Tuesday. Both candidates admitted to me today that this has been somewhat of an ugly race, and they've both had to be on the defensive to what they call dishonest or deceptive campaign ads. Now, Belgard, a freeholder, says she wants to help the struggling middle class and women. MacArthur, a former mayor, says he has a plan to bring jobs and health care closer to veterans here near the joint base. He says the basic building block of a strong economy is preserving and creating new jobs, especially near joint base McGuire. It's a $7 billion contributor to this regional economy. 
She says raising the federal minimum wage and creating equal pay for equal work for women will be essential. On average, women are making about 78 cents on the dollar of their male counterparts. It's 2014. It is a race where there has been a lot of expensive, he said, she said. In MacArthur's world, he opposes new laws to ensure women receive equal pay for equal work. Reasons to vote for Amy Belgard? Zero. I think it's, uh, you know, it's been a negative race and a negative campaign against me full of um, deceptions. And it's, it's Tom MacArthur's way of deceiving the public and turning away from some of the issues that he has, you know, being a disaster profiteer. MacArthur says his firm never denied wildfire or Sandy victims insurance funds. The company handled over a million claims during my tenure. Of course there were a few lawsuits. Sometimes even reasonable people disagree. And so to try to make uh, much of that I think is, is unfair. Whether it's uh, our seniors who are now looking to food banks to help put food on their table who want to make sure that Social Security and Medicare are going to be there for them. Amy Belgard often says that uh, uh, raising the minimum wage to 1010 an hour will cut the Social Security shortfall by a third. You, you don't improve the wage for 2.5% of the population and fix Social Security. That math doesn't add up. The NBC10 investigators go behind the scenes on a major new fight in the New Jersey legislature. Right now, a state senator in the Garden State is pushing for full legalization of marijuana. You know, he says the new industry could have a huge impact economically and also create thousands of new jobs. So we sent NBC10's George Spencer out to Colorado, the only state where recreational use of the drug is already allowed. He asked whether our area could really see the same benefits. Sale of recreational marijuana here in Colorado has only been legal about four and a half months. The idea here, as in New Jersey, is simple. Reduce the black market and send more tax dollars into state coffers. And around Denver, we saw a lot of people doing just that. Beneath the glow of warming lights with fans humming, this room of fast-growing marijuana plants is the cornerstone of Colorado's newest growth industry. And entrepreneurs like New Jersey native Brian Rudin are jumping in. This is actually, believe it or not, a very small grow room. After legalization here took effect January 1st. I think it would be a good fit for New Jersey. Rudin says his Starbuds retail shop operates something like a liquor store. I see, I see an ID. Selling marijuana to two or three hundred adults on a busy day, each spending about 50 bucks. You're all set. Thank you. Have a good day. All marijuana income is then taxed and sent partially to schools. At the retail level, uh, maybe 1200 bucks. 1200 bucks from one plant, yeah. Rudin estimates his shops alone have paid 400000 in taxes. Before that, he hired all kinds of people to launch the business. It's just been a huge impact on our overall economy. There was a real estate purchase involved. There was an architect involved, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers. The list goes on, and New Jersey State Senator Nicholas Scatari wants in. This bill is not a suggestion that people take up uh, ingesting marijuana, but it is a recognition of the people that already do it. And Scatari says rather than spending on policing and prosecutions, New Jersey could collect as new jobs are created and businesses open. In Colorado, we checked and found total tax income for retail and medical marijuana at 3.5 million for January, 4.1 million for February, and 4.98 million in March. And once the industry is established, Colorado expects annual totals anywhere from 70 to 134 million. It can be an incredible amount of money, millions and millions and millions of dollars. And given our location in between Philadelphia and New York, we at, we're in prime real estate. But not everyone wants that business, including Governor Chris Christie, who holds veto power. I'm not going to permit it. Never. And even in Colorado, where legal marijuana is heavily regulated, every one of your plants has a tag on it. Yes, every single plant. All that money has certainly not convinced everyone. What we are communicating to the young people in this is, yeah, we know it's bad, we know it's not a good thing, but you're going to do it anyway, so go ahead. That's just ridiculous. Indeed, some critics here in Colorado are already saying legalization is having unintended consequences. In the second part of our story, I'm going to the hospital at the University of Colorado and talking to doctors about what they're already seeing in ERs and uncovering some unexpected costs. 
Reporting in Denver, George Spencer, NBC 10 News.